Only Israel, in this context, we could say he's talking about a bastard nation and an accepted nation. See, one that's one that's that, that he's accepted, one that he's not accepted, one that belongs to him exclusively. It's holy unto the Lord, and one that doesn't belong to him, which is the Gentile, which is all other nations. God chose to reveal these things through the life of a man. Isn't that something? He chose one man. I wonder why he did that. Well, of course, it's going to parallel when his son comes and starts building his church. That's right. The eternal, this eternal abode. God chose to show what legitimate and illegitimate was in a nation. Yes. In a nation. Only Israel was given to fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, you can trace it back. Some people say, well, I'm, I'm connected with Abraham. Yeah, but are you connected with Isaac? Yeah, they all know we kind of drops off there. You know, I'm connected with Abraham. That's good enough. No, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Are you connected with all those, all three of those? Well, you got a good start. See, now this is, this is leading towards that you're one, part of the accepted nation now. Only Israel was given the fathers, the patriarchs. Only Israel was given Moses. Think about it. Moses was given to a nation, the nation of Israel. Uh, only Israel was given the law. They were given a law that was unlike anything that man had ever heard. This law permeated the whole world, and they knew these people were different. Look at this and listen to this law that they got. That's right. Moses, the law. Only Israel was given the prophets. Think of all the prophets that God sent to the nation of Israel. Why? Because it was his holy nation. This is the nation that they belonged to God. He cultured it. He actually, he made it come to pass. As an example, only Israel, only Israel was given the promises. A promise of a time when God was going to send the Savior. It was going to take away the sins of the world. Remember Jesus said it's not right. For me to give what belongs to my people to the dogs. Why? Why do you say that? Because it was his nation. See, this was his peculiar people. Mm -hmm. Remember he said, when I make up my jewels, it's a, his nation he's going to take them out of. This was his mm -hmm. chosen nation. Your chosen people. Now, all the other people? You say, well, wait, this doesn't sound fair. They're chaff. They don't, they don't even count. When you make up, when you do the roster of the nations, they don't even, they're not even on the paper. It's his holy nation. See, this is what, this is our God. This, he does things like this. Amen. They're not a people. They don't count in the divine economy. And why? Because God is not their God. That's why. They are not his people. What makes a person legitimate? Whether they're a son or they're not a son. That's, that's the bottom line. We've been taught concerning the holiness of God. It says, for verily, for they verily, for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure, but he, he did it for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. God has our best interest in mind. And the best interest in mind is that if we're ever going to spend eternity with him, we have to be holy. Now, remember the, the, the exhortations that he gave to this nation. These are just exhortations to a nation. Now, how much more in the day we're living in? Leviticus 11.44. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. You're gonna, you are expected to be just like me if you're going to remain in my presence. You come into that tabernacle, unholy you better have a sacrifice with you uh, yes. this, this, is, this is our god he expects holiness over and over in this introductory knowledge that god was revealing about himself we're reminded over and over that he's holy and so you be holy if you want to get close to him you be holy believe me the high priest didn't enter into the holy place without a sacrifice didn't do it he was afraid to do it because God's holy God. Right. He's a holy God. You all have found that the correction that your fathers gave you, well, actually it ended up being for your benefit. 
And anyone that's ever subjected themselves to the chast chastening of the Lord can testify of the same thing. Right. The end, it was good. It was right. It's exactly what I needed. I needed at the time to be chased. I didn't even know it. I thought I was doing just fine. God's calling his sons, not just to the knowledge of his holiness, but to partake of his holiness. Now, that's all the difference in the world. Yeah. It's all the difference in the world to say, well, I understand that God's holy. Do you want, do you want to partake of that holiness? Uh, are you really in your nature and who you really are? Are you starting to love righteousness and hate iniquity? Now, the prophets, they declared it. Here's Ezekiel 36. This is what God was going to do. See, we're living in this time. The, 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 our text is taking this into consideration that this is what God's doing. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. Oh, remember, remember when you weren't? You'll be clean from what? From all your filthiness and from all your idols. Well, I cleanse you. See, this was not a problem with God. God knew what he was going to do. You see, what he's telling us is that this, this chastening, see, it's, it's not pleasant, but it's just for a moment so that we might partake of his holiness. Yeah. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I'll give you a heart of flesh, and I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways. Hey, I'll cause, I'll do this, I'll make this happen. You'll partake of my holiness. No, I'll chasten you. See, I'll, I'll chasten you with rods. I'll, I'll do it because I want you to partake of my holiness. Amen. I want you to taste of the powers of the world to come. That when 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 you see me face to face, you won't be like you won't be like a new thing. You'll be ready. You'll be ready to reign Amen. with my son. Amen. Now, when the new man looks into the heavens, he doesn't see the clouds. <laughs> he sees beyond the clouds. He sees into the throne room. If the new man can make these kind of comparisons. A new man can look and say, I'm not home yet. I can look around and say, ah, this isn't my home. I'm not content down here. I'm not seeking things that are just of the earth earthy. Why? Because you start walking in the spirit. This is the response that, this, that the new nature has. I'm not going to go accustomed to this place down here. My God's up there. So see what... You can see that the, 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 the new nature is calculated to uproot you from the world yes. and to, to, to root you in heaven. How do you get rooted in heaven? You start partaking of his holiness. Yeah, I like that. We're not home yet. We have not yet arrived at the street of gold. Not yet. But see, we're on our way. See, faith has gotten a hold of that. I'm going to be there someday. So it's unreasonable for me to Settle for these paltry baubles of the earth. Yes, See, this is just unreasonable. Amen. You got to offer something better than that, Satan, because my father's given me an inheritance in heaven, Amen. and it's mine. Right now, we are actually experiencing time in the quarry. Yes. Now, see, the, the, now for, if you were a stone in the quarry, you would have your beginning as being part of, of the earth. You they were just a part of the earth. And the man went in there and he cut out part of the earth. Yeah. And it wasn't ready yet. It was just a, it was a, it's untooled. Yeah, it was just rough. And it was set aside. Yeah. So he could take another one out. And then the, the mason would come along and he would, he would say, okay, this, what's the specification for this piece? What does this piece need to be in the end? Of course, you know, he didn't have, he didn't make it up as he went along. He had to get the specification from the architect. The architect sent down the specifications to the mason that was working in the quarry, and he would say, okay, now, this says this one's got to be this big by this big. You're not the right size. Let's get to work on you. Because in the end, before I can put you on the boat and send you up the river to the temple, you got to be exactly that right size. Amen. you got to stay here until you're ready to go. You got to stay right here. Now, I'm not going to let you go until you're ready because my reputation's on the line. See, I'm, I'm the chief mason, and I nothing that I send up there doesn't fit. Everything I send up there fits perfectly. Yes, amen. This is the job of the chief mason. 